Dev Team's engine is a proprietary engine. They, they've built the technology and tool, the engine and tools from the ground up. But I honestly feel we're, we're setting a, qual, a, a new quality bar for visual fidelity. And I think when people start seeing some of the screenshots, people are going to think they're doctored. And when the game comes out, they're going to realize they're not. Sure, those, those pre-blast weapons that everybody knows, an AK-47, you know, we got, but what's really cool is all the, the amount of weapons we were able to invent for this game because post-blast, there's an armory down there, and basically, man, they just kind of go, well, uh, we, we like flamethrowers and we like sniper rifle. Stick it together. You know, everything from explosive pipe bombs, you know, um, there's, really, there's really some interesting weapons that do some really cool things. So there's also um, these really cool stealthy types of weapons, throwing knives and darts and stuff to get around and sneak around. You know, you can, you can uh, throw throwing knives at them in the back of the head and watch them drop silently to the ground. Even when you don't see them, the dark ones are there. Fear. The way you relate to the game world is awesome. So, um, for instance, you've got a watch that uh, constantly tells you how stealthy you are. So there's these three lights on it, green, yellow, and red. Green meaning no one can see you. Yellow meaning, hey, someone might be able to see you now. And red is you're pretty much going to get seen, get ready for some combat. But you can do really cool stuff like you're, you're sneaking through these areas and the, your watch is green. All of a sudden you get underneath the light. There's no electricity. It's all kerosene-based or oil-based. But all of a sudden you'll see it turns you know, yellow, and you can actually walk up and blow out the light, and all of a sudden turns black, your watch goes back to green, and you can do stuff like that throughout the game. The cool thing about those quick time events, and, and what they do for any game, is they really allow you to uh, control the camera and really frame something and really get uh, a cinematic feel. And we have those throughout the game for that reason. In that sequence, I think when you guys were in the tunnel, um, basically it allowed, it allows uh, for a moment when one of those mutated creatures, it gets up in your face really close and now you have to use your knife. So quickly, you know, you're hitting the button to try and stab this thing in the head. And if you succeed, you get that moment where it's about to bite you and you stick the knife up through its chin and it falls off the side of the cart. I think one of the biggest mistakes we've made in the industry over the years, and I've been around a long time, but uh, is, you know, that everybody thought that, um, that, you know, complete, emergent, do whatever you want, you know, blah, 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 was actually going to make better gameplay. Why did linear and you know single player become a four-letter word? It's just because that was the trend at the time. But what what it really does afford you from a storytelling standpoint is it's a huge advantage. Um, you really get to uh, to uh, you know uh, create some character development that I think was lost in some in some games that became you know let's say open world for instance. Metro 2033 is coming out on the Xbox 360 and PC, uh, and it's coming out March 16th. We're really excited about it.